The hunt for the king of the dark web. On the morning of July 5th, 2017, a man sits in front of his laptop in his villa in Bangkok. Online, Ooh, he is nice. only known under his pseudonym, Alpha O2. He is a multimillionaire, lives a luxurious life, and drives expensive cars. Slight. He feels safe in Thailand. Okay. Suddenly, he hears a loud bang in front of his house. A woman crashed her Toyota Camry into his front gate. He leaves everything behind and runs out of his house to the scene of the accident. A mistake with serious consequences. The driver is an agent of the Royal Thai Police Force. FBI and DEA investigators have been waiting for this moment for months. Authorities from seven countries have worked relentlessly towards this day. Wow. Will the hunt for the king of the dark web finally come to an end? Bro, the graphics is so good. The Wired journalist Andy Greenberg has published the story on the hunt for the Darknet Kingpin in a multi-part series. Wow. Additionally, there is a phenomenal Darknet Diaries episode on Operation Bayonet, which is covered in Chapter 3 of this video. You can find both links in the description. Shout out fun. It's the early 2010s. The dark web is picking up speed. The promises of anonymity and privacy are attracting more and more people. Thanks to Bitcoin, there is a new form of payment that isn't controlled by authorities. It's become easier than ever for criminals to sell their products online at a massive wow. scale. Yeah, that's crazy. With the advent of the dark web, a gigantic global game of cat and mouse began, and it continues to this day. What is it? Yeah, dark web's a crazy billions place. And billions of dollars. The Silk Road is perhaps the most legendary dark web marketplace to date. The platform went live in February 2011 and became incredibly popular. More than 100,000 customers bought drugs there. But only 2.5 years later, the operator of the site was caught and the Silk Road went offline. The authorities oh, wanted to set an example in the fight against drugs. The Silk Road founder received a life sentence. Wow. But the business was too lucrative to drive away other operators. So after the closure of the Silk Road, the number of dark markets exploded. They all fought for the top spot. Silk Road 2.0 was released just 35 days after the closure of its predecessor. The site survived less than a year. Evolution was another popular marketplace with a comparable size to the two Silk Roads. To buy things on Evolution, you had to pay Bitcoin to an account on the platform, a kind of dark web escrow account. And once the bought items arrived to the customers, the sellers were paid. There was an incredible amount of money with the platform operators at all times. At some point, these operators decided to steal this money, a so-called huh. exit scam. Wow. Agora has also been named as a worthy successor. Wait, so they didn't get caught, the people that just swiped that money? Wait, that would be like multi, multi-millions. To the original Silk Road. But the founders voluntarily took the site offline in August 2015. Huh. Business was getting too hot. Yeah. Exit scams, caught. arrests, voluntary withdrawals, and hacks. All of these were benefiting a new emerging dark web market, Alpha Bay. In July 2014, a man who calls himself Alpha O2 starts to develop Alpha Bay. Only five months later, his platform goes live. Initially, only stolen credit card data is offered and sold, but Alpha Bay quickly begins to offer more lucrative products. In addition to data and logins, there are now drugs, weapons, and malware. Services such as money laundering are also offered. Few things are forbidden. But items or data related to child abuse, hidden runs, and stolen bank account information from Russia is strictly prohibited. Oh. Alpha O2 probably doesn't want to mess with Russian law enforcement agencies. <laughs> Maybe he also wants to pretend to be Russian in order to mislead investigators. The website itself works similar to Amazon. It is user-friendly, there are search functions, filters, and categories. You're able to <laughs> wow. pay with Bitcoin, Monero, or Ethereum. This is supposed to provide anonymity. Alphabet even offers a so-called Tumblr, purchases that are blurred by bundling multiple transactions from different people. The platform works well and dominates the dark web. While other marketplaces popped up and disappeared, Alphabet remains strong. The number of users is growing rapidly, 
Barely a year after it was founded, the site has more than 200,000 registered users and 40,000 sellers. In 2017, wow. Alpha Bay has over 300,000 items on their website and over half a million dollars in sales every day. Every Alpha day. Alpha 2 is making money with every single transaction, oh receiving God. a share between 2 to 4%. He becomes a multimillionaire. Of like half a mil a day is nuts. Right now, an entire team is working on Alpha Bay. Alpha O2 has a representative named a snake, several moderators who handle disputes between buyers and sellers, and a PR manager. Wow. With the site's explosive success, the founder going. decides to retire from day-to-day -day operations. He renames himself. Alpha O2 simply becomes admin. From now on, communication only runs through the snake. As Alpha O2 retreats, American investigators are paying more- I mean, yeah, once you become like a multi-millionaire on this, you need to get out. Like, you're gonna get caught eventually, let's be real. ...and more attention to his true identity. Oh. Who is the powerful mastermind behind the platform ruling the dark side of the internet? A hunt that stretches across the globe and will last for more than several years begins. Wow. Yeah, you need to get out. You don't have to surf the dark web to find malware. The regular internet is full of malicious ads and pop-ups. That brings us to Nord's have different catalogs and different select a server in the so a 30 day <laughs> W ad, W ad. Who's the king of the dark web? Dun, dun, dun. Part two. The American investigators want to find out where Alpha Bay's servers are located. With access to the servers, they can close the platform or secretly infiltrate it and perhaps locate the operators. IP addresses provide information about the locations of users and servers. In closed networks like Tor, website requests are routed through a number of random servers around the world. Routing through many servers cannot be traced back. It is purposely made difficult to find out where servers, operators, and sellers are located. Wait, so that can't be traced back? Or maybe if you stay on the same servers, it can eventually be traced back. It just takes ages, so maybe you need to switch them up Aided. a bit. I don't know. Because of that, the American investigators had to try a different way. They start browsing the platform and buy drugs anonymously, hoping oh. for any mistakes by the sellers. Perhaps the products, packaging, or postage stamps can provide clues to the identity of the respective drug dealer. Ooh. Then they could arrest him. But these are just the small fish. Dealers come and go. Yeah. Investigators want Alpha O2. But the mastermind behind Alpha Bay seems to take every precaution. He seems to know every rule of the game. So the investigators become desperate until December 2016. I wonder what breakthrough they get. Robert Miller sits behind his desk in Fresno, California. He works for the DEA, the American Drug Law Enforcement Agency. He's working on Alpha Bay, and until this day, it was a pretty thankless job. But suddenly, an email appears in his inbox. The sender is anonymous. It seems like Alpha O2 made a fatal mistake in the early days of Alpha Bay. Oh, no. Every user who registered on the website at the time received a welcome email. The email address of the true sender was visible in the metadata of this email. Oh. Although the error was immediately corrected, the anonymous tipster saved one of those first welcome emails. Maybe the tipster was one of Alpha O2's first customers. Maybe an operator of a competing site that got a hold of the mail somehow. Who knows? Anyway, he silently watched Alpha Bay growing in the dark web, only to then hand the mail address over to the DEA. Oh, he the email got address staked. is pimp, no. uh, pimp Alex91 at hotmail.com. <laughs> this email was the breakthrough Crazy for email. Miller and his colleagues. No way. Via the email address, the investigators find photos from 2008 and 2009 of an Alex on skyrock.com. That's a French language oh. social media platform. He also linked an old dating profile. The profile oh, lists Trois no. Rivières as his hometown. It is located in southern Quebec, Canada. According to the profile, he was 17 years old at the time, so the 91 in his email address could be the year he was born. He would have been 23 years old when Alpha Bay was founded. Oh my god. The username Alpha02 also age. appears on a French language technology forum. In 2008, he explained how to remove a virus from an image. His email address is at the bottom of the post, and oh, also gosh. his full name. Alexander Kazis. Oh, the investigators have his name, but where is he? Rose cooked. They find Kazis' PayPal account. He provided his private email address there as well. Through his LinkedIn profile, they also find out that he works as a freelance software designer. He also seems to run his own tech company called EBX Technologies. On Facebook, the investigators find the profile oh, yeah. of his fiancée, a Thai woman. Oh. Apparently, the Canadian lives in Thailand. 
The clues lead investigators to the country's capital. Bruce devious with it. Bangkok. With the help of Thai authorities, the investigative team identifies three properties owned by Casas in the city. One house is located in a gated community. Alpha O2 lives there with his wife. Then there's a second house and a three million worth mansion in the outskirts of Bangkok. He also has a holiday home in Phuket and is in the process of buying another villa in Cyprus. Huh? Investigators begin tailing him. The lifestyle of the multimillionaire includes several cars. Kazes enjoys driving around Bangkok in his Lamborghini. Agents watch him, follow his routes, and track his iPhone. Whereas Kazes lives in a beautiful house of his wife, he invites his many affairs to one of his other houses in Bangkok. The investigators oh, call that place cheeky. the bachelor pad. Yeah, it seems Kazes like is it. an active member of a pickup artist form. There, men give each other advice on how to be successful with women. <laughs> Under the name Romeo, Kazes publishes what? conservative family values and keeps a quasi-sexist live blog about his successful sex life. Other than that, his everyday life is quite normal, pretty unspectacular for the king of the dark web. He gets up early, checks his social media accounts, works, and is home a lot. From time to time, he attends a language course or goes out to eat with his wife. Around these routines, the authorities meticulously plan his arrest. In June 2017, a few weeks before the attack, a few American agents were sitting in the lounge of the five-star Athene Hotel in Bangkok. Suddenly, Kazes appears. He parks his Porsche Panamera at the entrance and casually oh, strolls through the lobby area, straight towards the agents. There are thousands of hotels in Bangkok. Are they busted? Has the king of the dark web outwitted them? Kaze sits at a table a few meters away from the agents. They have never been so close to him, but he only meets for a business dinner an incredible coincidence. Wow. At this point, no one suspects that just one month later, Kazes will be dead. Dead? Huh? Pause, I didn't know he dies. Alpha Bay is the largest darknet market in the world at this time. Oh, there is wait, they're talking about the website, I think. Competition. <laughs> I'm dumb. In Europe, the Hansa market is growing rapidly, keeping European authorities busy. Dutch investigators find the servers of the Hansa market thanks to a tip from a security researcher. They are located in a data center in the Netherlands. Hmm. A unique opportunity arises. They monitor the servers, copy the data, and dig through countless chat entries from the operators of the site. They find out that the operators are Germans, who probably still live in Germany. Together with the German Federal Criminal Police, BKA, the Dutch want to bring the Hansa market under their control. But suddenly, the Hansa market disappears from the Dutch servers. The admins probably found out that their servers had been copied. In the yeah. chats of the operators, the authorities also find a few Bitcoin addresses. They start tracking the transactions of these Bitcoin wallets until they end up at a Dutch crypto exchange. They contact the exchange and ask for the data. The Bitcoins lead to Lithuania. Together with the authorities there, the Germans and the Dutch try and locate the new servers. This time, the authorities want to strike. But something unexpected happens. The FBI tells European authorities about their plans to arrest Alpha O2 and to shut down Alpha Bay. Operation Bayonet is born. The operation is led by the FBI and DEA and involves the cooperation of law enforcement agencies from a total of seven countries. Wow. Europol is also involved. That's a the big FBI operation. is instructed to wait with the takedown of Alpha Bay until the Dutch, in cooperation with the Germans, have taken control of the Hansa market. If Alpha Bay is taken down, Hansa would be swamped with new buyers and sellers. This is often the case in the dark web when a site closes or if there's an exit scam. Customers mm. and dealers simply move. But this time, customers and dealers would move to a site that's been hijacked by law enforcement. With that data, the Dutch could convict thousands of unsuspecting criminals. A honeypot. Oh, yeah. Alexander Kazis knows nothing. He continues to drive through Bangkok in his Lamborghini, writes nonsense on his favorite form, and cheats on his wife. On June 20th, 2017, the this first guy. part of the mission succeeds. Oh the data center in Lithuania is stormed by Dutch forces. At the same time, German authorities arrest the two operators of the Hansa market in Siegen and Cologne. The operators cannot warn anyone before their arrest. The Hansa market is under Dutch control, 
and nobody in the dark web knows about it. Wow. Good operation. July 5th, 2017. Bangkok. It's time. There is a warrant for Casas. Today, the Royal Thai Police, DEA, and FBI will arrest him. Alpha O2 could finally be put down after more than two years. A gray Toyota Camry drives down a dead-end road towards Kaze's house with the Royal Thai Police Force agent at the wheel. She tells the security guard that she took a wrong turn. She wants to turn around, but unintentionally causes a minor accident. The noise and chaos are supposed to lure Kaze's out of his house. Oh, He's supposed to come out spontaneously without thinking about it. This part is important. In the optimal case, his devices should stay unlocked when he is getting arrested. I uh, me, surely if you're into that devious level of stuff, you're con you're never gonna ever walk away from it. Even if you go for a bathroom break, you're not gonna walk away and leave that open. Surely. Hard drives were locked and encrypted, it would be difficult for authorities to access Alpha Bay. Kazes leaves his house and approaches the Toyota. He has his cell phone on him. Suddenly, several officers try to catch Kazes. He attempts to run back inside, possibly to shut down his computer, but he's overpowered. The investigators run into his house and look for his laptop. It's in the bedroom. Quickly, on make and not sure on standby. it's on. The officials have caught him. Oh, wow. Alpha O2 Quickly is still logged the into the server, hosting Alpha Bay. Oh my God. Investigators gosh. search the laptop and find multiple passwords for the Alpha Bay website and servers. The Canadian has a fortune of $23 million. Authorities confiscate his luxury cars, houses, a hotel, and millions in cryptocurrency. Wow. Kazes' wife is charged. The Thai woman is accused of money laundering. Oh. One week later, Trigger on July warning. 12th, Alexander Kazes is dead. He committed suicide while in custody. The king of the dark web is history. The shutdown of Alpha Bay by authorities is being purposely kept secret for the time being. When the platform is suddenly offline, no one knows why. An exit scam? A hack? Have the operators retired? As expected, countless users migrate to the other darknet platforms, including the Hansa Market. For four weeks, the Dutch authorities watch thousands of criminals trade on the platform. They collect valuable incriminating evidence. So on July 20th, 2017, the Hansa Market is shut down as well. On the same day, the U.S. Department of Justice announces the end of Alpha Bay and Hansa, a gigantic success for the global authorities. Wow. Today, the Department of Justice announces the takedown of the dark web market Alpha Bay. This is the largest dark market web place takedown in world history. The dark web itself is not an evil technology just for criminals. We need places on the internet in which whistleblowers and journalists are relatively safe. Marketplaces like Alpha Bay are, however, still part of the picture. The global game of cat and mouse is far from over. The demand for illegal drugs, weapons, counterfeit money, and malware is too high. It didn't take long for the Hansa market and Alpha Bay to be forgotten. Users flocked to other existing platforms. A number of new darknet markets sprouted up and positioned themselves better than the former market leaders. The Russian darknet market Hydra was at times more than twice the size of Alpha Bay. Wow. In 2021, it was also shut down by German and American authorities. So now there's a new contest for the title of the king of the dark web. A promising contender is the snake. He relaunched Alpha Bay in 2021 and still runs the darknet marketplace to this day. Damn, that's actually crazy. Wow.